oh, what's the point? So I would like to be able to share with you the world of the online video. We know that they're out there, but how do you develop your own executive presence so that you can move your own career forward, you can promote your business and establish better communications with your employees? And this has come in so many different ways. It could come in online appearances and interviews, Zoom presentations, and even more. So what I would like to cover with you this morning would be a few areas. First of all, just talking about how video can be used to boost your visibility and effectiveness, both externally and internally. I also want to talk a little bit about AI because it is out there. And the human versus the AI presence is something that is going to make a big difference in how you're perceived. Then I'd like to move into some tips for on-camera confidence. And finally, how to use some dynamic delivery to make your, your uh, presentation, your persona as charismatic as possible. So let's get started. Okay, as long as I can get this going. There we go. Okay, first of all, you do not want to hide away on any kind of Zoom presentation, which hopefully none of you are doing. The most opportunity you have, go and take it. I know too many people who like just to sit there and turn their cameras off, and that's not going to get you anywhere. What you're going to find through video is that you're going to be able to build your credibility, your visibility, and your trustworthiness. And you're going to be able to do that in all manners. So, Let's just talk a little bit about why video. There are two different ways that video can be useful. First of all, it is going to establish your credibility. It is going to establish your visibility, and it is going to create that trust element with both customers and employees because they are going to see that there is a human being there. It is not a faceless corporation or a faceless, uncaring C-suite employee. They do not need to see that. They wanna get the feeling, especially with younger generations, that there is a human element. What are your values? What do you represent? And the people behind the company or the people at the helm of the company are going to be making a tremendous amount of difference to them and if they wanna do business with you. Now, when we're talking about external videos, and that would be to customers, to your marketplace, to leads, prospects, or whatever, you're going to find that video is going to carry a lot of punch, which is why you want to be on it. 89% of your consumers prefer video. They're also going to be watching it much more often, not just with YouTube, but on social media. You're going to be seeing the regular landscape, the wide, the, what you normally see in film type of longer videos. But more often, you're going to be seeing the shorter ones, the ones you catch on your phone, the selfies. And these are less than a minute long, and they all make a difference. And people are making snap judgments when they see it. You only have a few seconds to make a good impression, and you want to be able to do that right from the start. So you want to get comfortable on video and know how to use it to your best uh, advantage there. There are right now a little more than 2.6 billion YouTube users out there, and they are Googling everything because YouTube is a division of Google. It's the number two search engine after Google. They are searching for companies. They are looking for products. They're looking for services. And especially with the younger generations, millennials and Gen Z, they're not gonna be doing much unless they can see reviews, unless they can see that there is something there that they connect with personally. It's not just about buying the, the best tool in the tool shed anymore. They wanna be able to get a feeling for the energy the conscience behind the company. And that also is where they're making a lot of their investments. When you have a video and when you put yourself out there, you will also find that you're gonna be driving more traffic to your website, which of course is going to lead to visitors, which are gonna to lead to leads, prospects and customers. It's all part of a funnel that is being used within, especially social media today. And it just brings them in. And essentially, down at the very deep, it's a matter of, do I want to do business with this person? Do I want to do business with this company? So it doesn't matter what you are offering. It is the human element at the core of it that is going to resonate with them one way or the other. Now, what are some of these executive videos? They could be welcome messages. 
Here is our company. Here's a new division. Here is our partnership. It could be a corporate vision and where you want to go. It could be new initiatives or new products and services that you're rolling out. But what's especially of interest to a lot of people is the behind the scenes kind of view. What is really happening? People just love to peel it back and get the feel for the inner workings, the people that are working there. What does it take to bring a product to market? And all of this can make some astounding, outstanding content. Now, the other half of that would be your internal videos. And these are gonna be the ones that you're gonna share with your employees. They could be company updates. It might be key messages. It could be informational. It could be instructional. But what they all will do is build credibility and rapport with your employees. Because again, you're not some faceless, nameless, or they might know your name, but they have no idea who you are and what you represent. They get to see you up front. Now, it may not be in a warehouse situation like this picture gives the impression of where the employees are on a big screen overhead. It could be one-on-one -on -one with little messages that just come through the day. Now, this doesn't mean you have to do video all the time, but you do have to be comfortable making them every so often so that you can put yourself out there. And you'll find that this will also build a lot more loyalty because they're gonna feel like they have a connection with you and that you understand where they're coming from. Transparency is so important. People want the straight poop. They don't want you blowing smoke at him. And there's nothing worse than hearing there's going to be something major going on with a company, but they're hearing about it from their customers or they're just hearing rumors going around the, you know, the, the coffee shop. You want to be able to share things with them. And there's no better way than doing that just yourself. It's also a great avenue for building teams. When people see you, when people get that leadership, when they feel that presence, and I'll go into more of what an executive presence is, they will feel like they are part of the overall mission and part of the team. So let's talk a little bit about the human element. AI is everywhere. People are generating avatars. They are putting out messages out there. I see that all the time as an on-camera actor and as a voice actor, but guess what? Most people can tell the difference. And at this point, people do not like it. They can tell that something is off. You can only do so much with AI. And while it's getting better, it's missing something that only a human being can provide. And that is the heart of the message, the emotion, the connection. AI can simulate emotion and it can simulate expressions. And I know some companies are working very hard on that and they're trying to get the voice to do the same. But it's not the same thing that you feel a connection when a person is speaking from their heart directly to you about something that matters. It's qualitative, but it's there and I think most of us can spot it. Now down the road, especially with the younger generations, they're gonna get very used to the robotic voices, to the avatars. But I think even they will notice if you ever have gone into an in-person networking, how much more vibrant and three-dimensional and real it is than just talking with somebody on Zoom. I mean, I love Zoom. You can make wonderful presentations. You can have wonderful discussions. But when you're face-to-face, -face, that's different. And the same thing is true with video. When you just have a robot talking, when you have something scripted that's being read, it's not the same thing as a human being out there thinking, considering, and sharing when you're also gonna be talking as a person, the most important quality that you have is to be approachable. And that, by that, I mean being conversational. If you have a few verbal gaffes, that only makes you more likable because people identify you as one of them. You're going to be able to see that even the little nuances we have in our day-to-day -day life, our backgrounds, how we feel, how we move, give everybody a sense who you are and what's important. So the impersonal aspect, the informal aspect are two different things. Impersonal, leave that for the AI. The personal, approachable, the conversational, that is the way to go. So let's just kind of talk about what is an executive presence and how the heck are you gonna be able to translate that online? Well, first of all, it's gonna be how you carry yourself. This is all part of the, the gravitas, 
the uh, composure that you have. It's what you think of when you think of a leader, somebody who is grounded, who is confident, somebody who is assured, somebody who listens. Um, this is the presence when people just see you, they realize you are a leader, that you're somebody that seems to articulate their thoughts clearly, you are able to lead a group of people towards a certain goal. Um, you're able to communicate in a very strong way. Now, this is where the speaking comes in. Are you able to speak clearly and concisely? An executive presence is somebody who is going to be able to sum up in a few words or a few sentences, the core important ingredients. Now, of course, you can expound, on, expound upon those a little bit later, but the essence of that is being able to create a vision and to be able to lay it out for individuals very clearly and very simply. It's also how you look, and that's the professional wardrobe, but it's also how your company and your brand presents itself. And that could be anywhere, of course, from suit and tie to a very casual look. But it is also going to be a little bit more than that. Do you come across as somebody who is confident, somebody who is caring? Um, put your brand colors in your wardrobe. And if you're going to be giving a consistent number of videos, a number of messages, you might want to work on that type of a branding thing. So for example, if you're trying to show vibrancy and energy, you may do shades of reds. Now for guys, that might mean more or less maybe a red tie or maybe a, a brighter shirt. But if you want to show that you're softer and that you're going to be a little bit more of a caring, perhaps you're offering services along those lines, then you're going to probably want something that's a little more approachable, perhaps something that seems more like a friend, a more casual outfit, and an environment that reflects that. Most importantly, the executive presence is how you're going to make other people feel. And now that can be a little hard on a video, but you can still bring your true essence across through the camera. This will be the connection. This is going to be the charisma. Uh, this is the inspiration and the motivation that you're able to channel by speaking about something that means a great deal to you. And when you put all these together, how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you look, and how you make others feel, that can come across on a video, no matter whether you're looking at it on a small mobile device or on a big screen. So let's talk a little bit about the on-camera confidence which is a big part of it. Most people are quite nervous. They don't know really what to do, how to act, and what to say or not to say. So what I wanna do is to give you a few pointers that you can take with you. And practice makes perfect, so give it a try. When you are appearing confident on camera, you're gonna appear relaxed, which means you're gonna feel comfortable in your body. You're going to be able to look like you're talking with a friend, and that you're not just stiff and immobile because people will read that and it will look like a barrier went up in front of you. You're gonna need your talking points. Now there's several different ways that you can handle that. You may be using a teleprompter if you're a little uncomfortable. And if you're gonna use a teleprompter, I would advise you to get some training on how to use it. So you just don't look like a talking head reading back and forth, which could be very disconcerting. I would instead perhaps have your main talking points off to one side or the other so that you can refer to them. And it's very natural when people talk is just to think, maybe look over, hmm, all righty, and then get back to what they're saying. You're gonna physically prepare as well before you go on camera. The number one thing that you're going to wanna do is hydrate, glass of water. Now, I know this is a coffee chat, but if you're presenting, it's better to have that coffee afterwards because it can tend to dry up your throat. And that's the last thing you want. You want your vocal cords to be working very, very well. So water is your best friend. And if you start drinking some water an hour or two ahead of time, it's going to give your vocal cords a chance to be hydrated, to be able to move. But, you know, physical preparation is a little more than that because you want to get comfortable in your body not just with your voice. So if you can beforehand, do a little bit of exercise. Now, if you don't have much time or exercise is just not your jam, there are a few simple things that you can do. And here's what you might try. 
First of all, raise and drop your shoulders a few times. It is amazing how much stress you can release just by that simple act. Give it a try, up and down. You can do the same thing with your eyebrows, believe it or not, up and down. So look surprised, look angry, and it gets your face moving. But if you wanna get more of your head in action, just swivel it around from side to side, up and down. You can move your shoulders around. You can move your whole torso from side to side. Do some knee bends. If you're feeling athletic, a couple sit-ups and push-ups will also get the blood going. But when you are in your body, you're gonna be much more naturally relaxed. You're not gonna focus so much on the tension. You're gonna be able to focus on what you're presenting. So what I wanna do is to give you a few more secrets on how to become more comfortable on camera. Okay, these are the warm-ups that I was talking about. And I'm saying them again, just because I want to emphasize how important they really are. Now, you don't need to be a professional speaker and you don't have to have a microphone. You could talk directly to your computer if that's what you need. But you might want to get some vocal warm-ups going just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Some of us may know some of the tongue twisters, uh, red leather, yellow leather. You say that a number of times. You could try Peter, uh, Peter Piper picked, uh, yeah, I haven't done that one in a while. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Um, another one, you know, you need unique, unite New York. You know, you need unique, unite New York. Um, whether the weather be hot, whether the weather be not, we'll be together, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Things like that, that just get your mouth moving. Even saying the alphabet. And here are a few other funny things to try. And I know it's gonna look silly, but I told you it was gonna be fun. Move your tongue around in your mouth, up, down. Pant like a dog even. It's gonna loosen up your instrument. Okay, but enough of the warm ups. What else can we do? We can breathe. It's the most important thing we can do. And here are two easy, quick types of breaths that you can try. First of all, the basic breath. Just breathe in. Hold and exhale. I like to do it through the nose. Breathe, hold and exhale through the mouth. Again, it will settle you into your system. Another way is what they call the relaxing breath. And by the way, if you have trouble sleeping at night, this is a great way to just drift off. Breathe in for the count of four, hold for seven, and a long, slow breath through your mouth for eight. Now, here is something that we call in the acting world, a frame. The frame is where you're gonna be looked at. I mean, right now I am on a Zoom screen and my picture is usually going to be rectangular, but sometimes it's going to be more vertical, especially if I'm doing something on the phone or it could be any number of other frames. What's important here is to understand how much area you have to work in because the last thing you wanna do is just be speaking and then just sort of drifting off. And then next thing you know, they're only seeing your ear. You don't want to be standing up if you're sitting down, unless that camera is following you. You also want to be very careful not to move around too much and to be aware of your gestures. If you're a big hand talker, try to keep your hands underneath the frame because if you're gesturing very wildly, it's going to be very distracting. And you want the attention to be on you and your message and what you're saying. Keep in mind too, that when you're on camera, small is large, or actually I could say it's really huge because people are getting a close up, usually of what you're saying. And that screen, well, it could be a 72 inch TV screen for all you know. Be aware that you want to be able to keep your gestures contained. That doesn't mean to be stiff, be natural, but realize that you don't have to move around too much that you could just make the smallest movements and they will seem much larger than they really are. You could practice that just by doing some video with your own iPhone or Android or whatever else you have and just see how much different it does look. That if you're speaking normally and you're just gesturing over here and moving around there, it could be distracting. But when you're more or less staying in place with your feet planted or sitting squarely in your chair, it comes across much stronger. And it gives a presence of somebody who is more confident, somebody who is in charge. 
and somebody who is the master of the media, in this case, the video. And then finally, the big question is, do you stand or do you sit for your presentations? Well, it pretty much depends on you and what you're comfortable with. If you're going to be giving, let's say, a, a, an instructional or something that's very motivational, you just may want to be able to stand because you're going to have more energy in your body and it's going to give people that energy in return. First of all, if they're going to be learning, you don't want them to fall asleep. And somebody who's moving around and speaking a little more dynamically will do that for them. Or if it's going to just be something more inspirational, um, they're going to feel that connection. They're going to feel that you're really into it and they will respond accordingly. Sitting. If you're going to be sitting, let me give you a little bit of a hint here. You can have a chair with a nice back like that, but you want to make sure you're not going to relax into it and look like you're about to fade off to sleep. What you might do, as in the picture here, is have a backless stool. It will allow you to be able to sit, be planted, without looking like you're going to be leaning over, taking advantage of an armrest, or leaning back and looking too relaxed. So either one of these is fine. It depends on the message, what you're comfortable with, and just work with it a bit so that if you're standing, you're not going to drift off screen. And if you're sitting, you're not looking too relaxed or too casual and unless perhaps that's the kind of message you want to give. But wait, I also like to give you some five tips to really be dynamic online, because if you're going to be making your videos and if you want to establish a charismatic executive presence, you're going to want to try a few tricks up your sleeve. The first thing is talk to one person. Now, this is the essence of something that is going to be received as conversational. Because when people are looking at a video, it's usually an individual type of thing. Somebody is sitting at their desk or watching their phone. Not often you're going to have a group of people watching a single video. And so there is a relationship there. It's very similar to when people feel like that the person who is on their favorite TV show is their friend. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that your audience is going to think that uh, okay, we've got a personal relationship just because you're talking to me and I'm watching you. But the idea is that they feel like you care about them, that you are addressing their particular needs, whatever they might be. Now, this might seem a little disconcerting because you're thinking, okay, what, I've got a little green dot there or a red dot? Are there people all over? And then they got lights and they've got microphones and I don't know what to do. The best way to think about this is to have a favorite person. It could be a friend, a colleague, a relative, anybody who is going to be the most supportive of who you are and what you have to say. And either think of them and have them in your mind, or better yet, put a little picture right next to that camera lens. Because that way, you're speaking directly to them. Now, if I have this directly next to my camera lens, this is me talking to the little green dot on my computer. See, I'm just staring right ahead and maybe it looks like I'm talking directly at you. If I just shift it slightly over, that's not too far off. And I could be talking to my good friend, Stephanie or Melissa. I don't want to be putting it over here because if I were talking over to Alex or Neil, then it looks like I'm not talking to you, the viewer, and you're kind of wondering who you're talking to. So it's a matter of positioning. But when you talk to one person, and that's the essence of what I want to communicate here, People will feel like you're talking to them. And that is going to come across as true leadership. But let's add in a little bit of dynamic delivery. Now, here are some things that you want to try. And my favorite one, I'm going to keep for last. So I'm going to start off on the right part of the screen and work myself around clockwise. It's your pace. You don't have to keep the same pace for everything. And what your pace is should be appropriate to the message and to also the person who you are. If you are a very thoughtful person and you're sharing things and people are leaning into here like E.F. Hutton, well, then you might have a slower pace, especially if you're gonna be providing technical information or you're gonna be providing some key initiatives that are so important. People are taking notes and they need to pay attention and you, know, you really want it to sink in. But if you're talking, let's say, to your sales executives and you want to get them all excited to go into that new year and meet all of their goals and then exceed so they can get to club, you're going to have a 
happier, peppier pace. You're going to be showing that enthusiasm and it's going to be going at a fairly quickly, very fairly quick pace so that people will feel the energy and they're going to want to be part of it. Your tone is also part of that. Is it a serious tone? Is it fun? Is it anything in between? And for the most effective messages, you're going to want to play with a combination of pace and tone, depending on what you're talking about. I wouldn't advise against doing everything the same way, but I wouldn't mix it up. So when you're speaking about very serious things, speak a little bit more seriously, take it a little more slowly. But when you're punching a joke or you're getting people excited or you're leading into a transition, speed it up and put a little bit more humor and, and uh, personal nature into it. Volume. You wanna speak at a natural conversational tone because you're most likely gonna be having some kind of a microphone. It might even be the microphone that's built right into your computer. It might be a lapel mic. Or if you're gonna be in a vid big video production because you're making these videos and they're gonna be polished and you're working with a proper production company, you might even have a boom mic overhead. Know what the volume is and they will test it with you. Or you could test it yourself if you're just making this in your own office or at home. You don't wanna be shouty man where it just sounds like you're trying to sell the latest thing. Speak in a normal tone, speak comfortably, but don't speak too softly. And always play it back just to see if you are hitting it at the right notes. And now finally, my very favorite thing in the whole wide world would be pauses. Pauses are wonderful to avoid filler words. And I'm gonna to get to those a little bit later. But with a pause, it gives you a chance to think especially if you're going to be nervous about being on camera. It gives you a chance to collect your thoughts and then turn back and talk to the camera. What does this do for an executive presence? It makes you look thoughtful, intelligent, caring, and also very much involved with what you are trying to share. It's also great for dramatic effect. So if you want to get your audience excited about something, you might use a quick pace. You may have a peppy tone and you might have a, loud, loud, uh, a louder volume. And then all of a sudden, people are leaning in. Oh, why? What's going on? What's next? Then you can share what you're offering. So it can be used for dramatic effect as well as an opportunity for you to be able to collect your ideas and be able to articulate them clearly and concisely. Now I mentioned filler words and do your very best to avoid these. What are fillers? Um, you know, well, and the ubiquitous like, no, executives don't sound like valley girls. And usually executives are going to sound like they're in control, they know what they're gonna say, and therefore they don't need to stumble over the words, which is why we use pauses if you're a little uncertain. Practice these, take your time. Another thing you could do is to use short sentences. Remember how I mentioned using very concise ideas, concise points and being clear? Boil everything down to a few short sentences and give people time to digest it. You won't stumble over those quite as much. And if you need to have some tips off to the side, however they might be, use them. There is nothing wrong with taking a little bit of time and referring over here. Okay, yes, let me just check my calendar, even if you're really just checking your notes. That gives the impression that you are organized and that you are very much on topic. But let's move to number four, where to look. In the acting world, we call these eye lines. And I mentioned it a little bit beforehand. Do you look at the camera and do you look all the way off? It depends on what you're doing. Now, most videos, you're going to be talking directly to the viewer. And when you're doing that, yes, do talk to the camera lens or to that little photo. Or if you're using a teleprompter, the way it's positioned is that the camera is right there in the middle. And you're going to want to practice being able to read those words as they're scrolling through, but keeping your eye pretty much and using your peripheral, your peripheral vision right there in the middle. That way, people feel that connection. But what if you're going to, let's say, be interviewed? and somebody else is either with you on screen or maybe they're off screen, they're just feeding you the, the questions. Well, in that case, there's it's perfectly fine to be able to look off. I wouldn't look and give them a profile view. It's usually not the most flattering and 
it's probably not the most interesting either. But just adopt a 45 degree angle at the most. You might look off 20 degrees or 30 or 45. And that way people could see your profile, but they could still see your whole face. The most important thing when you're speaking on video would be to have the eyes clearly visible and as much as possible directed to the viewer because that is the window of the soul. And that's how they're being able to judge whether you really mean what you say and whether you're authentic, credible, and trustworthy. So make sure your eye line doesn't keep drooping. Now, if you're talking to somebody, let's say you're being interviewed for a webinar and you are using a camera up here and you have the person down below, there's nothing wrong with that. But you might even want to be able to position a separate camera such that it looks like it's all on one level. It's totally up to you and whatever you choose. And I mentioned a little bit about the visual aids. Don't be afraid to have them. They are going to be your lifeline. Have those notes over to the side. Have somebody perhaps right behind you or right behind your camera there that is able to show you the main points or to be able to give you somebody's name if you're trying to remember who is that. Um, oh, well, oh, okay, yes. And then you don't have to go through that whole stumbling block. Oh, yes. Uh, Charlton Heston, of course. Yes, we've worked together many times. You know, that sort of thing. Um, teleprompters are fine. And I would only use those again if you're very well trained on them. But the more that you know your stuff, the better off you'll come. But if you need a visual aid, whatever it might be, then don't be afraid to use it. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on a basic video studio setup. I do want to be able to get to questions. But I wanted to show you something that was in between having something in your office and a full-blown video production studio. This, for example, is something you might just set up in a spare bedroom, which is essentially what this one is. But I wanted to show you all the different components so at least that you are aware of what they are. First of all, you want a stable camera. In this case, I am using a DSLR camera, a Canon camera, you know, the one you just go around and take shoots with, no big deal a microphone. In this case, it's an external microphone that's sitting on top of that camera. As I mentioned before, the microphone can be a boom, it could be a lapel mic, or if you're just speaking up close and personal, it might be right there on your device. Lights are essential. Now, I am using here as an example, some big box lights, like you might find in a video production setup, but ring lights work just great. And that's what I have in my own office. And when you're gonna set them up, set them up at 45 degrees to the camera so that the light will hit you on both sides and be able to illuminate. I'll try to avoid any kind of light directly above you because that's going to just throw some wonky shadows. And if you want to use natural light, make sure that natural light, like a window, is either in front of you or to the side. If it's behind you, the reflections are going to throw everything off and you'll be washed away. You also want a non-distracting backdrop. It can be something solid, or like what I have here, it could be just my office environment. You can use a mother image, you can use a green screen. If you're walking through, let's say your business offices, you may choose a vision of that to show, or you might just even have a corridor, a plant, it doesn't matter. But the idea is to keep it simple and not distracting in line with your brand and with your image. If you're giving a serious presentation as the CEO, um, you may not be out there, you know, in your rocking chair somewhere. So just a few things to think about. And I have a feeling that most of you already know what the right backdrop is for yourselves. And then if you're going to be making any of these videos, even for yourself, like a quick social media one, there's some basic editing software. Now, the software that can be used, and I don't want to go through all of it because you probably have teams for that. But you can do so much yourself just within Instagram or if you're on TikTok, or you can use a wonderful tool called CapCut. But the most important thing that I would like to emphasize is to caption your videos. When you do that, you are going to draw in a much bigger audience because you're going to get in all of the um, audio impaired. You're going to get people who can read it and see what's going on, not having to rely on let's say hearing it in a busy or noisy environment or if they're not able to hear you at all. You will also find that people will watch you more often because we walk around with our phones all the time. Do we always have the, um, the sound on? 
No, we might be in a meeting or we might be doing other things. We're just kind of scrolling. So this way they can see exactly what you're talking about and grab their attention. So the whole idea here was to be able to give you a few tools about how to use video, why to use video, and why it's so important. And to get it off started strong, because people only will give you a few seconds before they decide your video is worth watching or not. Now, when you're an executive, you probably have a built-in audience and you may not have to worry about that, but you still want to be able to come across as comfortable on camera and charismatic, the executive that you are. So I thank you very much for coming and I would encourage you to reach out if you have any questions, I would love to talk to you. And I guess we can do some Q&A right now. So I'll stop the share. Okay. All right. So, um, Russ. Hi, how's everybody going? I have some, a little bit in the chat. It's more, this works. Thank you so much. This is, works really well with Toastmasters, an organization I've been with 20 years. I'm kind of currently sort of recent former and, uh, move, and moving on, taking it to the next level of paid speeches. Another thing that we talked about sitting down versus standing up there. I know this in my last job, I was at where there were these high, these high type chairs where people were practically standing. I, I wonder if you have any tips for, because since I have a desk here in my home office here, as far as elevating the desk or elevating the table, as well as an, an elevated, an elevated chair, because I sit too much and now I'm gaining weight. No, oh. <laughs> which well, I know, you know is like the is like is like the modern day smoking is sitting too much. Absolutely. Um, well, there are standing desks. If anybody is comfortable with that, if they just like to stand, or if you have a high stool and you can get a desk that's up there, you have a desk that you can move up and down. You can even get some platforms which, like tripods, will have adjustments. You can move it up or down. As far as elevating a whole desk, well, I would call some moving men and bring some boxes underneath it. You know, pull in maybe the other something boxes. more like uh, almost like things to support it, something stronger than that that would almost. I don't know about cylinder, concrete cylinder bot things, but something to move it up that you can support a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, um, that I wouldn't be so sure about doing. I pretty much yeah. leave my desk where it is. That's a whole other weightlifting program. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, what I would do is I would just, there you go, Russ. What I would do instead is have an area where I can have a higher table or something I can make look like a desk. For like a lot of the things that I do, I bring in different types of counters and such. And depending on what I need, I'm able to adjust them up or down and then move the camera accordingly and then move your chair accordingly. You know, people can't tell when you're on camera how high or low you really are. So you, yep. can, you can play around with it. Right, thank you, Udo. Yes, uh, I'll say up front, you really packed a million dollars in your suitcase. There's wonderful content. I look forward to seeing the the repeats. Um, but uh, a comment before leading to an unfair question. <laughs> I, I once worked for a Fortune 50 company where it was common for the CEO to either have taped or live uh, internet communication, audiovisual and or his reports. And I think that the walk away has traditionally been, you don't know what they're talking about. You know, this company was so big, a business would be a standalone business in a lot of other companies. And, and there's probably the obvious things. If I'm a CEO, I probably need to figure out what are the top three messages I want to get across. And so, but here's the unfair question. You know, but besides asking other people to critique uh, review in advance, what are the other things you should be looking for as a speaker to ensure that you're truly connecting with your audience? I would do a test run. I think that you can work with a number of different people. You can either work it with some of your colleagues, um, friends, mm -hmm. if you're ready to get some real honest feedback with family members, or you can work with video coaches. There are a number of folks, you know, and I'm, I'm one of them, to be able to see, are you making that impact? And if I am unfamiliar with your company, do I understand what you're talking about? And that is actually the messaging aspect of it. 
So what is it that you're trying to get across? And we get so lost in the weeds that we forget what's the big picture? What does it look like to somebody who is totally unfamiliar with us? Now, when I was in an IT, acronyms, everybody used acronyms. And the first thing that was being told whenever we were speaking or writing is, say what it is, and then put the acronym you know, in parentheses. <laughs> and you need that outside opinion. And depending on what you want to uh, need help with, it could either be somebody who's very familiar with your material, like somebody internally, if you're concerned about how it comes across, then somebody who is uh, well-versed in, in speaking and just mm -hmm. communications. Or if you want to know if I'm coming across using this media properly, then, you know, you can also talk to somebody like me. Um, so those are different ways of going about it. So I don't know if that helps, but that's how I'd go. Mm -hmm. no, th no, thank you. You gave some additional ideas. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Andrea. Um, yeah. Hello. And thank you so much. Um, I was wondering, Laura, if you would recommend to use filters in general. I'm sorry, recommend a what? to use filters, like filters oh. for the camera? Um, I don't deal with them. Um, and I usually leave that, if I'm working with a video production company, I let them do it themselves. I believe, and this is something that I also have learned from my acting and voiceover work, you give them yourself as you are. You don't need to have all that other stuff. And if, if you like it, go play with it. I've never used it. I couldn't recommend anything in particular, um, but I just kind of give them the the real unvarnished <laughs> self, and I think that just kind of hits home a little bit more. Thank yeah. you. Authent authenticity, yeah. Um, Cameron. Yeah, I wanted to uh, ask about what is the professionalism or the right, I guess way to have a background do you have a background do you let it be a natural you know blurred out version and your kids can walk through the back door and wave at everybody is that okay but if you do have a background what are the styles or things that uh you should you know consider um oh. you know they have a lot of out of the pocket ones that are there and it's you know modern offices or different things but if you're in interviews particularly like what are the types of backgrounds you should be looking at I would say one that reflects who you are, what your message is, what your company is, what your business is. Uh, for example, if I'm giving business uh, conversations, interviews, um, I'm speaking, whatever, I just like to use my own office. This is really behind me, you know, and I can touch and feel everything. I know a lot of people are going to use other images. It's always been disconcerting to me as the viewer when part of them turns black and parts of it in appear and disappear. I, I don't care much for that. You can blur it if you wish. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, people will also have more or less a solid screen behind them with just their logos. So for example, when I am creating informational videos, like I have a series on on-camera confidence and they're very short, less than a minute long, I just wanna pack a punch. So it's me speaking, I have a caption below, and then I just have a nice solid blue background behind me. It pops, it gives you a lot of color. Um, you yourself are gonna to wanna to wear more or less simple things or solid colors. So that is not going to be visually distracting. You could put your logo up there or the title of whatever you're doing. Um, so that's another option. Wherever you're going to be making these, do try to have a quiet place. I mean, we love our kids, but unless you're putting in a family vibe, you probably will end up redoing it again and again until it does get quiet. Mm. So try to find a quiet place in your office or in your home. Or if you work with a professional company, they're going to have plenty of options as well. Now, what does work well as a real background besides offices, living room settings, again, without little kids, maybe, or dogs barking in the background, but just a simple sitting on a couch, maybe having a plant on a stand next to you, maybe having a picture behind. A little bit of family stuff doesn't hurt either. Um, I've seen people just have something very simple where they're just standing next to an open window. But the drapery is closed, of course, so the light doesn't come in. And that, again, just gives a warmer vibe. So it's trying to emulate your message along with your brand and all that. So um, I have tried, oh, by the way, if you're going to shoot outside, go for a quiet space. Know that airplanes and helicopters are going overhead. Just 
work with the natural light. So if you're going to be working with the sun, uh, either have it overhead or in front of you, which I know you might end up squinting. But the last thing you want is the sunlight to block everything visually. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. We have a question in the chat from Robin. Can you share a little bit about CapCut and your experience with it? Oh, yes. CapCut is wonderful. Um, CapCut is a free tool that you can use. And it's great either for longer form videos, you know, the, the horizontal ones, or the vertical, like the selfie. And it's pretty basic in terms of how we learning how to use it, but it's got so much capability. What you'll do is just bring in your raw video. And from there, you're going to be able to trim it. You're going to be able to add music. You could add stickers. You could add captions. You can add video. I mean, I know I haven't even touched everything that it's able to do, but it's kind of like one-stop shopping if you're trying to easily and quickly create a video and then just send it out there. But there are times I've also even just used the plain old Instagram, you know, editor, and that works out fine too. Uh, for that, I'll, those would be more casual social media things, you know, that are shot in a, you know, a portrait style. All right, thank you for sharing that. Any sure. more questions? We have another minute or two. If anyone wants to inquire with Laura while we have her. Yeah, just have a question. Hey, Lauren, thank you so much for the informative mm -hmm. session. What are one or two things like, I think you enforce again and again, but it still go wrong in the meeting. So like we, we try to do something good, but it's still we are not able to kind of put our point across or or something is wrong in the presence. What are one or two things you can highlight? Okay, these are absolutely need to watch. Oh, you mean major mistakes that people make? Yeah, in the meetings. Oh, in the meetings. Um, I would say, first of all, you know, not turning your camera off when you go to the bathroom, believe it or not. <laughs> Be aware of your tools, you know, know how to use it properly. If you're going to use a fancy background, don't turn yourself into a potato like it happened to one lady during uh, COVID. Not a good look. She couldn't turn herself back. Um, but essentially, if you're going to be doing meetings, have yourself in a proper background. You know, sit up, pay attention, uh, look at the people that are in there. I wouldn't be sitting in a meeting and obviously looking at your phone. Um, and I would say it's pretty much the same things that you would do if you're going to be speaking on a video. You listen, be clear and concise in what you have to say, take your time speaking, and um, you know, just share right from the heart. The most important message I can give is that to distinguish ourselves from everybody else out there as executives or from the robots is to speak from our heart, what really matters to us, and just to be human. And I think that will come across better than anything else. Does that answer your question? You did. Thank you. Thank you. That's great advice. Anyone else? Any other questions before we wrap up? Oh, Udo, you're on mute. Yeah, Wait. thank you. Um, one would normally think that an audiovisual meeting is improper for purposes of conveying bad news. Is there a scenario where that is appropriate? And what kind of cautions or watch outs for when you are deliberately using this medium, you know, that, that could, you know, you're laying people off or something else that's just um, terrible from a business point of view? Yeah. Well, I mean, put it this way. Who likes a Dear John letter? Who likes to get an email in their inbox at 5 p.m. Friday? Don't come back on Monday. Your job's been terminated. After all those years of service, you think you could at least have talked to me? I think it's the same thing here. And I think, again, even though it's very hard for anybody to lay people off, um, it's just to be there for them. And to say it in human personal terms, due to falling sales, due to competition, we really regret having to downsize. And we do want to announce to you before we announce it to everybody else that these cuts are coming. And 
if you can talk to an individual, of course, it's always better one on one. But if you can't, or if you're just issuing it to a division, I think saying it just as you feel with the information is fine. It can be very hard. People are not going to be any happier about being let go. But at least you took the time to care. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be all touchy feely. I'm not honestly a touchy feely person. But it does show the human side of things. And you can have a quiet, more somber type of video where you're sitting there and saying, it really pains me to say this. We have done this. We have done that. But unfortunately, in 2025, things are going to look different. Um, I think that is probably the most important time to be able to have a video so that people don't go away with hard feelings. And if you're just looking at it for your own benefit, at least you're going to come across as somebody who had to make a very difficult decision. And it gives you the opportunity to explain why it was made, how it was made, and what other options may or may not have been there. Of course, it depends on what bad news you're delivering, but I think you will go much farther with that than if you were just announcing a layoff and there was no real communication going forward. Thank you. You're Interesting welcome. perspective. Any other I can't raise my before? hand for some reason. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Hi. So I have a question. It's Elizabeth here. Um, so you uh, recommended in the background that it's okay to have, um, you said some family stuff doesn't hurt. Um, oh my goodness. But basically I want to know if um, having personal things in the background that add to your company logo or not. So I had somebody come on an interview he had some text on his self, on his clothing, and it was a difficult. Um, and so what kinds of things help or don't help? You know, like if you, I might be wearing like a, a trade show shirt or something that has my company logo on it. Is that appropriate or not, for example? Well, I think if it's a small logo or a small name, that's fine. But if it's going to be too distracting and people are looking at the shirt instead of you, I don't think that's going to be to your benefit. You know, the same thing with the background. Don't have too much stuff going on. But, you know, you want to have something there of interest that reinforces who you are and what you're going to be talking about. Um, and I just would keep it in line with whatever the conversation is. Um, but I wouldn't be wearing big plaid stuff and I wouldn't be doing anything that is ostentatious or telling everybody, look at me, look at my company. And it's just in their face. You want to come across as professional. You don't need to do all that. It happens. It's just there just by virtual being you. So I, hope I can maybe I may be allowed to make one quick comment. So exactly what you just said i went to one of the galleries here in park city bought this picture behind me where i was where i lived and everybody i was interviewed by talks about patagonia first and that breaks a lot of eyes so everybody picks it up usually people know what it is they may not have been there all the time but even people when they haven't been there they recognize it people particularly I would say from the California side, from Western states, I talk to more too. They usually recognize the mountains and kind of start talking about it. Well, you raised an excellent point. It's something that people can, can connect with you on. Either yeah. they Patagonia yeah. or they admire it. Yeah people, yeah, people do the same thing with any other personal items. If they have an award that might be shown or if they published a book. Oh, right. yeah, so people have books in their background and that's saying, yeah, I'm a published author, that kind of thing. It gives a touch point because I'll tell you from my days as an IT sales exec, the first thing you do when you're walking into somebody's office cold is, oh, what do we have in common? What can we share? And then I'm going to always remember, oh, Andrew and Shelly's Patagonia. You know what? I've always wanted to go there. Have you been there? What's it like? Well, how should I dress? You know, and it just makes it so much easier to get to know somebody. So where's Park, are, where's, I'm sorry. I was going to ask where Park City is because, uh, <laughs> yeah, which state? The Utah. 
Toxicity? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, cool. So we are out of time. Laura, this has just been an absolute pleasure. Um, obviously, the comments and chat and verbally, everyone has loved um, and appreciated what you have offered today. Just excellent information. And I think for one of the big takeaways is be your natural self, right? Be authentic. Come to the table with who you are. And from my perspective, that's what clients say to me constantly about candidates. I needed to see who they were authentically, um, as well as being professional, right? <laughs> At the same time. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will send out uh, what we can of the presentation. And to all of you, have wonderful weekends. We mm. so appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye, you. guys. Mm -hmm.